Hi teacher friends, I'm joining you from Ghana country and today we're diving into the world of robotics for the primary classroom. If you've got robotics in your classroom or are thinking about getting them, you're in the right place because I'm going to show you some new and classic favorite robots that we use in our Caesar Lending Library kits to level up classroom learning. If you don't have robots, stick around to the end of the video because I have a couple of free options that can get your students learning about robots without buying them. If you're wondering why you use robotics, it's essentially about giving you additional tools to make learning engaging, interactive, and to complement what you do in the classroom. Robotics can engage students in computational thinking and systems thinking. They challenge your students to think critically and logically, to experiment, collaborate, analyze, and solve problems. In a world driven by technology, these skills are not just valuable, they're essential. We've been running our lending library since 2016, sending digital technology kits to over 2,500 schools far and wide across Australia. We've tried and tested so much equipment over the years, we know you want robust, flexible, reliable, and easy to use robots that are engaging with plenty of resource support. Our latest robotics kits have a sustainability theme, so I'll highlight some learning activity ideas from our latest Digital Technologies Plus X course that connects robots with the Australian curriculum cross-curriculum priorities. Sustainability is not just an educational trend, it's a vital life skill. Digital tech and sustainability can be powerful. Innovators and technologists are using tech for sustainability today, with examples like AI drones that monitor and save koalas after bushfires, or farm robotics that use AI to efficiently sort produce and reduce waste. We've even seen robotics that go underwater to monitor our precious coral reef. By teaching sustainability, you are shaping responsible future citizens who care about the world they live in and who can imagine ways to harness the power of tech for a more sustainable world. If you're worrying about the learning curve for robots, don't worry. I'll share some easy entry point options that don't require coding up to more advanced options. So are you ready to jump into robotics and to empower your students? If the answer is yes, then give us a thumbs up and let's dive into five robotics for primary classrooms. Let us know which is your favorite robot in the comments below. Maybe it's one you see on my list or maybe it's a different robot that you've used. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Up first, we would like to introduce the humble and trusty Beebot. The Beebot is a child-friendly robot and perfect companion for the early year students. There's also extras like themed mats and algorithm cards that you can purchase to level up your Beebot use, or you can simply make them yourself. Using the Beebot is simple for any learner. Children program it by pressing the buttons on its back to create an algorithm. With a memory of up to 40 possible options, you can watch it as it follows your instructions, navigating its way around the floor. You can purchase battery operated Beebots or rechargeable ones. Its sibling, the Bluebot, has an additional Bluetooth capability and can be programmed using an app or PC, and it can also do 45 degree turns. You can encourage students to design mazes, create treasure hunts, or even simulate real life scenarios. One of our activity ideas on our lending library is to use the robot on a clear grid mat or a mat that you've marked out with masking tape to undertake a biodiversity tracking exercise by learning about animals and matching them to their footprints. Animal tracking is a skill and complex knowledge system that First Nations peoples of Australia have developed over thousands of years. Indigenous bushrangers are working with communities to harness this knowledge to monitor and protect endangered wildlife species across Australia. If you're introducing young learners to the world of coding or want to engage young learners in English, maths and other subjects, the Beebot will be your trusty companion. Sphero is a programmable app controlled robot shaped like a ball. It has a durable and waterproof shell and it's easy to use. It has a wide range of features that make it an ideal tool for teaching various STEM subjects. It's quite flexible with different age groups with different levels of coding. You can draw on the screen, you can use scratch blocks or writing JavaScript text programs. There are options for Android and iOS, Windows and Mac. 
It has advanced sensors to keep tabs on its speed, acceleration and direction, or orientation with a built-in compass, perfect for maths. The Bolt version also features infrared communication, allowing your robot to communicate with other bolts, enabling new project ideas. There's lots of resource support online. Search and find lesson plans at the Sphero Education website. Foodbank.org says Australians generate more than 7.6 million tonnes of food waste each year, which is enough to fill a cricket stadium nine times. Get students engaged in this topic by using robots to identify recyclable and waste materials. There's an excellent hour of code lesson plan resource on their website for Severo Goes Green, suitable for around year three to four, where students build a game about a recycling program. Students can navigate the robot around the school or classroom to collect recyclables and rubbish. Students learn how to use a number variable that counts over a period of time, how many items are recycled or thrown away, with the goal of having more recyclable materials. Ozobots are small rechargeable robots that can fit in your palm, or maybe several of them. This is a great option for those with limited storage or for transporting to different classes or locations with ease. These small but mighty robots are equipped with sensors, allowing them to follow lines and color codes drawn on paper or screens. Ozobots provide two engaging entry points for students to learn about coding. Firstly, screen free by following lines drawn using black and colored markers included in the kit with no text or block coding needed. They can also be programmed using a simple drag and drop visual programming blocks with Ozoblockly on a tablet or computer and sync to the robot. These little robots can be programmed to do things like light up, turn, spin, speed up or slow down using the different marker combinations or the visual programming tool. We love an activity idea by the Curious Minds group in Australia that they ran with their cohorts, which has been turned into a lesson plan on our Lending Library website. Students are given a brief, which is that their company has been commissioned to plan a new settlement where automated vehicles will be the only means of transport within the city. Students then in small teams to plan and design a sustainable city using Ozobots as the autonomous vehicles. They consider various city requirements, including residential and commercial areas and sustainability features in their planning. Students create an algorithm using the textures or programming tool to take the Ozobots through the city and to do things like change color as they progress through a different area to indicate a sustainable element, pause at intersections and change speed depending on the area. Okay, this one is a new one to our lending library. Kai's Clam. This robot can engage students in multiple areas of digital technologies as it integrates with the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and virtual reality. Wow. This robot has a little more of a steep learning curve for teachers to set up and use. So we recommend it for those of you who have had some experience in teaching digital technologies or who are really just keen to give it a try. It's flexible for students from upper primary to high school and can be programmed using block-based visual programming tools or text-based Python programming. The robots also work with micro bits and students can use the sensor pack included to collect their own data. Students can engage in collaborative coding and can even program their robots from all over the world via the cloud. This is a perfect option for hybrid learning or having students partner with other students across classrooms or from different locations. Kai's clan links in with popular edtech products like Minecraft and Tinkercad, allowing students to do things like create robot avatars and design 3D environments for their projects. We love that Kai's Clan has over a hundred lesson plans with real world problem solving that can inspire the use of the five different AR VR adventure mats. We've adapted some lessons from Kai's Clan for our lending library, linking to, linking to the Australian curriculum version nine. Some examples include developing robots that can clear the ocean floor to tackle the growing increase in microplastics. Now, microplastics are a growing environmental issue which have extremely negative impacts on our marine life and aquatic robots might be able to help us. Another one is using the robots to perform rescue missions. 
to say wildlife during bushfires, something that we experience a lot in Australia and particularly with growing concerns and issues with climate change. In bushfire, rescue groups find it difficult to reach injured animals with high temperatures and inaccessible environments that can put humans' lives at risk. Using autonomous vehicles like robots for rescue can help in this mission. Okay, this is one of my favorite robots, Dash. This is an excellent robot for engaging primary students in learning and has a quirky and lifelike personality. The use of Dash is flexible for primary years with five free coding applications available on the iPad and Android tablet that take learners from using their finger to navigate the robot like a controller to using Path, which allows students to then construct algorithms using drag and drop interface. And then lastly, students can practice coding with visual programming blocks in Blockly. Students can even use the Xylo app to create musical performances using Dash's xylophone. Some of the great features include its movement. So Dash can drive forward, backward, left, right, and spin, and you can change the speed and directions of the wheels. Dash can also look up, down, left, right. Dash also has distance sensors in the front and the back, allowing Dash to detect obstacles. Dash has LED lights that can be programmed to change color, and it can also be programmed to make sounds. It has a microphone, so it can be programmed to hear and respond to your voice and sounds. Dash comes with online access to lots of lesson plans created by educators and also professional development resources, which is an excellent support to kickstart and maximize your use of the robot. Harnessing Dash's sensor capabilities, students could program Dash to undertake a rescue mission for someone trapped following a natural disaster. Students could program Dash to sense and dodge obstacles and move through a track to the other side while sounding alerts. Now, I promised you a couple of ways you can get started without any robots. One of my favorite lesson ideas is to become a human robot yourself. Have students try to program you making something like a sandwich or a pizza. Your task is to follow every instruction. I mean, literally. Trust me, it's not that easy. Pick up some bread, put the butter on the bread. You will have students laughing while also learning about how we need to be really clear and explicit and logical about the instructions we provide a computer or a robot. This is an excellent unplugged activity for all ages to introduce algorithms and coding. If you're looking for an online option to get students coding, jump onto code.org and check out the Hour of Code lesson, Code Farm by Coders. Students use drag and drop visual programming interface to practice what it's like coding a robot on a farm. Robots are increasingly being used to help farmers not only be more productive and efficient at farming, but to reduce waste. Have a look at this great video, Apple Farming and Technologies on the program Future Farmers by the ABC. Leela and Baxter explain how apples are grown, picked, sorted and transported on their farm in Northern Victoria. They're using some amazing tech like robots and AI. If you're in Australia, you can borrow one of our lending library kits with digital technologies funded by the Australian Government Department of Education. These kits include some of the robots I covered today, as well as some other exciting equipment. Priority goes to schools who are remote or regional and have a low socioeconomic status. We've seen how engaged students are using robots with our kits, and I'm sure you and your students will love them too. Take care and see you soon.